those clouds look dark at the top of the mountain. Look at the visibility. It's diminishing. There it is. So lots of umbrellas going up at the top of the mountain. The track is there declared it. wet. Shocking conditions. It's raining down here now. Yeah, it's raining down here, it's only more this side. It's raining in pit lane, it's raining in pit lane. What's your call, mate? Oh, 50-50, no, no, I really don't know, mate. No, no, it's too, it's too dangerous up there. You cannot take risks on a slick tyre on a wet track. Pit, pit, pit. Pit this lap, mate, pit this lap. No risk, no risk. So Wind Cup has stayed out. That's a big gamble. I don't know, I called him. Huh? I called him, I don't know what he did. What's happening, brother? Are you in? Are you in? Wow, well, they're gonna they're gambling. They reckon there's nothing more coming. Too much wet, everyone's all wet apart from him. Get him in, please. Yep. Tell him to come in. It is absolutely unloaded here on Pit Straight. It is hammering down. Hammering down. It's heavier, it's heavier. In, in, in. In this lap, mate, it's going to intensify. No option. In this lap, no option, mate. No risk, no option. In this lap. No, oh, he's in, he's in. Okay. Wow. This will be a safety car. Pit this lap, mate. Pit this lap. Pit this lap. Oh, they respond. Wind cup stays out. Shake up. He can't double stack. He cannot afford to double stack, Jamie Wind cup. Here's the last splash. This is going to be a huge battle of the teams. Departing his lounge. He had the shorter fill. Jada, with the safety car lights on or off? This is the story, and that's Jamie Wincup passing the Lexus RCF safety car with the lights flashing. Can't see any green light, can't see any other additional signals, but it looks like a penalty for this man. Paul Dumbrell, Jamie Wincup for passing the safety car. Why didn't he come in? I haven't asked. I, I haven't asked him yet. Well, it's his fault. So. Yeah. Done? Done. Done. He went past it yellow. Pardon? He went past it yellow. It was a struggle there with uh, the double stacking situation. Chose to continue on for that one lap. Uh, he did, we didn't. He was meant to come in. Wow, that's a big statement. He chose to. He was meant to come in. That's the take out of that. Mm -hmm. So for two years in a row, a little bit of tension here between team and driver. Sorry, brother. And in he comes. They love him. He's a crowd favourite. He's relaxed and he's about to bring home yet another Bathurst victory. This is going to be a sweet victory for Red Bull Racing Australia. It's 2.2 seconds to Frosty. Craig Lowndes is a miracle man at this place and secures his sixth victory in the 1,000. Credit to these guys out here, Red Bull guys, who have done a fantastic job all weekend. This is the race we all want to win and uh, thank you to everyone down here. Guys are what make the sport the great one. So uh, thank you, and uh, to everyone, thank you very much. Yeah, it was certainly both ends of the spectrum from Re for Red Bull Racing Australia at the Bathurst 1000 this year. Obviously, ultimate triumph for Craig Lowndes, winning his sixth Bathurst title, but heartbreak for Jamie Winkup. Uh, of course, his race clouded in controversy there. Now, our very own Mark Scaife sat down with Winkup to review what had happened on the mountain in 2015. <laughs> Jamie, thanks for your time, mate. It's been a 
very tough year. Has been. Has been a tough year. Strange circumstances and weird. Well, they're, they're all tough years, but um, when you don't get results, they, they always feel a bit tougher, for sure. Has the Bathurst scenario sunk in? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, not not maximising an opportunity. That's certainly come off the hype of Bathurst, but then it uh, takes three or four days to actually realise that, hey, we had a, had a real shot there. You're not always going to have a real shot at the biggest race of the year, and uh, it's it, it slipped slip behind, but uh, that's the way it goes, mate. And it's under investigation. Safety car procedure, car number one. You're adamant that you saw the green light on the safety car coming over Mountain Straight. We don't have half an hour, but uh, mate, at the end of the day, I, I got called to pit in. I didn't know it was a safety car. So I was coming into the pits, I saw Lounsey pull off in front of me, and uh, I thought the team had made an error and put us both in on the same lap. So I made a split second decision to stay out as soon as I saw the safety car flags near the last corner I knew I was in big trouble. So I was coming up Mountain Straight, couldn't believe my eyes when, I, uh, when, when the safety car was off to the right with the green lights flashing. The light flashed four times as I come down the hill, three, three of those times they were green. The last one, it was orange. Um, so mate, I'm pretty confident that 99 out of 100 racing drivers would have uh, done the same thing. That's like a get out of jail free card, isn't it? You get to pass the safety car because they've told you to. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I was, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing and um, come over the hill and, you know, that they'd made a mistake with the safety car. It wasn't positioned right and it shouldn't have had green lights on. You make judgments. It happens like that. Would you do the same thing? If you just did what you're told and just did it straight down the line, um, there would have been a lot of races that I that, that I haven't won. Um, I go out there, um, I, I, we, we have a plan, I follow that plan, but if, if I can see an issue, then I'm going to try to react to it and, 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 and make the most of the opportunity. Um, I've probably, probably been 25 times I've had to do that over the years. Um, two out of the 25 ha hasn't gone my way. It's been highly publicised, but the other 23, I'm thankful that I did make the right call and uh, it's got on the top seven of the podium. Have you and Roland had a one-on-one -on -one heart to heart? Uh, no, no, we, we didn't. We didn't need that. We've certainly spoken about the, the situation. I, I, of course, of course, you're going to get some flack. You know what I mean? Of course, there's. I, 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 to be honest, I just love the passion. I, I love the passion. If if if, if you don't have a, a heap of Ford fans or people that don't like you, smash you the next day for making a mistake, then then it's probably time to hang the helmet up. The only thing I was disappointed at after Bathurst was influential people within the sport, knowing knowing it was a touchy subject, knowing that, hey, it's not really the truth that I went against team orders, you know what I mean? But knew that was a great angle and, and pushed on that and actually amped that up and provoked these people that weren't sure, you know? I, I don't know much about NRL, but I watch I watch the telecast, and then I hear an expert like Sterlow come across and say, "This is what's happened." So I believe that scenario because he's he's an expert, you know. So um, that was the only I was concerned about was the or disappointed with was category experts and and, and yourself and your crew as commentators. You you give that expert opinion for the viewers to uh, to make a, make a call on that, you know. So it's it's massively critical that you guys get that right. Some great insight there, uh, Scafey, with uh, Jamie Wincup on what transpired on the mountain this year. I think it's fair to say it's still pretty raw from him. He, you know, he's very passionate, obviously, about what happened, uh, sticking to his guns in the decision that he made in the heat of the battle. But it was, uh, it was a tricky one, wasn't it? Well, it was. <clears throat> he's having a go at us. It's basically the commentary team first, but having a go at us about maybe not getting it right. We thought we got it right because... The reality is he went against team orders. That and Roland was, Dane said that. I mean, we heard reality. from Roland during the telecast and after, yes. and he gave us some perspective on what the team was saying and what Jamie did. Or oh, and you just saw in our play on there the reaction from the team. They they definitely told him, and they said, you know, why didn't he come in? So put that in perspective. He's done the wrong thing. Second thing is that that's the first time. So we're showing it today for the first time. The overlay of the car coming over Mountain Straight and he definitely saw a green light. Now, no one else at that stage had seen it. Check this out, it's on your right, look for it. You can see the green. Green, 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 and when he got there, it went orange. Now, you're doing 260 kilometers an hour, Jess. You can't just hang it off sky hooks and stop it. So the, <laughs> no. re the reality of that is that you've got to pass it. Now, there's a couple of things that could have gone on then. Mm. So, 
If you've passed the safety car, because he knew he passed the safety car. I mean, we're, we're all playing the game. So here it is. There's the green lights. It's the first time we've seen it. So what he, what he said is absolutely the truth. He saw the green light. Now, I would say that everyone should have considered that anyway, because yeah. that's, that's wrong. Second thing is, and by a race official standpoint and by a, a normal racing adjudication standpoint, he probably should have had the benefit of the doubt there, and they should have said, you've passed the safety car, slow up, and we'll get the safety car to go in front of you. Now, that would have parked him behind the safety car. Now, that, uh, that's a redress. That should have happened. It didn't happen. He blazed on. The second thing is that if he didn't disobey the team and he come in behind Lowndes, he would have had to double stack. So let's have a look, because we've actually got the vision of him coming into the pit. This is on board. He was called in. All those cars there, Reynolds, Winterbottom, Lowndes, they've all come in. Jamie stayed out. He went against team orders, and if he come in and, and parked behind, none of us like double stacking. In fact, Craig Lowndes and I lost Bathurst because we double stacked. You park up behind... It seems like an eternity, mm. but he would have finished on the back of the podium somewhere. His speed was fantastic. He would have come out, we did the calculations, between 10th and 12th. So if he double-stacked, did what he was told, rough chance of being on the back of the podium. If he does what he does, he's nowhere. Well, two years in a row, uh, Jamie Winkup's Bathurst 1000 has ended controversially. He'll be looking for redemption here on the Gold Coast this weekend. He is going to feature in the top 10 shootout. We're going to take a very quick break here on Fox Sports. When we come back, that is about to go get underway here on the streets of Surfers Paradise. Can Jamie...